Hi everyone, Stepan here. It's Friday, so welcome to another Friday Milligan video. Uh, today I want to talk about a very important tactical aspect of the middle game, and that's looking for in-between moves. Well, tactical and generally good principle to know is trying to find a better move uh, once you have an okay move in mind already. And psychologically I think that's easy to do. Uh, because once you see an option that's okay, and okay, I don't lose, this is a good move, then finding a better one is sort of for free, and you get to do it as a bonus, so it doesn't hurt to do it. Of course, doing that in sight note is hard, doing that in a bullet or a blitz game is hard, but in classical tournament chess, this is something we have to be aware of. And I wanted to do this topic because I was analyzing around 50 of my own games, and I found 11 opportunities for a Zwischenzug, or an in-between move, or an intermezzo, which could have, well, maybe won the game had I played well after the move, but definitely given me uh, an advantage in comparison to what I did in the game. Uh, sometimes they weren't very, uh, uh, well, very exciting moves, maybe they were quiet in-between moves, but definitely gave me an advantage. So, let's talk about Zwischenzugs, in-between moves. So, uh, I'm going to give you an intro with this basic basic position. This is Carlsen Nakamura from the London Chess Classic. This is a Zwischenzug we've probably all played. It's white to play in this position, of course. Uh, the queen is attacked, therefore the rook cannot be saved. Mm -hmm. A check would be meaningless because uh, rook d8 check, king g7, rook d7 would be met with rook takes queen. Okay, so still even material. But you can play an in-between move which wins material and basically gives white a winning endgame, as Magnus Carlsen went on to show. So what Zwischenzug is a move you can play uh, before you do the obvious thing, in this case take Black's Rook, uh, in order to gain an advantage, be it material, space, whatever else. So, as Emmanuel Lasker used to say, or said, uh, when you see a good move, look for a better one. So, in this case, uh, the very simple rook takes g6 is a forcing move, which Magnus Carlsen played. Of course, in this position, black cannot take the queen because it's check. So, once h takes g6 is played, queen takes rook gives white an obvious advantage upon up in an endgame, which is, well, requires technique to win, but is winning. So that's a basic vision tool. Now we are going to go over five uh, positions which are much harder. Uh, they are more likely to occur in real games and you are more likely to miss them in real games. Which is why I tried to choose five examples which are basically different uh, and I tried to give you an overview of what strong players see that, that we don't. The first game we are going to be looking at is Wolfgang Unziker uh, versus Michael Tal, uh, played in Milan in Italy, 1975. In this position, uh, of course, the black rook is hanging, so white is going to be able to regain his material advantage. Of course, uh, you could do the obvious. So, for example, white to play takes the queen, king takes queen, bishop takes a8, and, well, you are a pawn up. Fine, you have five pawns, black has, uh, black has four. Black would probably play something like bishop e5, and then b3, and then most likely a draw. Um, I'm pretty sure strong grandmasters would draw this position, but you could win. But once your opponent plays a free move, so you can take the queen without thinking and you know that your opponent up, it's a free move, look for a better move. And in this position Wolfgang Unziker basically won the game in one move. If you want before each uh, solution you can pause the video, so, so pause the video here. Okay, uh, in this position, a great in-between move uh, is actually declining the queen trade. Uh, and this is more likely to happen in a real game. It's not really a Zwischenzug in a way that you play this and now your opponent has to respond, but you can play a smart move, declining to do what your opponent wanted you to do, what was the obvious thing. So whenever there's something obvious in the position, try to look for something smarter. In this case, queen takes h6. And of course, in this position, if uh, black tries to save his rook, uh, he will get mated. I will show you how. So he basically has to defend against mate. He has to play something like bishop e5. Why? Because if, for example, rook b8, the only move that saves the rook, then bishop takes g5 check. The only move would be queen f6 because this, excuse me, this bishop is covering the light squares, this bishop is covering the dark squares, and the queen is covering f8, so queen to f6 and queen takes f6 checkmate. Uh, 
Okay, so after queen takes h6, it's basically a position two pawns down in which you still give your rook up. So, for example, bishop e5 was played uh, in the game, trying to meet bishop g5 with bishop f6, but now queen takes g5, uh, king to d6 was played, and now bishop takes a8. And I mean, two pawns up, this is this is just game over. Queen c7 played, queen takes c5, and black resigned, because king takes c5, bishop f4, trades the queens off, and three pawns up in the end game so a great in between move which declined wolfgang gunziker declined to do the obvious thing okay now a bit harder uh, in this position uh, this is a game between pa between paul benko and duncan Suttles played in the us open in 1964 uh, duncan Suttles played uh, a visually very attractive move knight c5 this move obviously threatens a knight to e4 and well you could try to play something calmer, like f3. You could try to save your bishop with, I don't know, well, maybe rook e1, maybe moving the queen, maybe moving the bishop, whatever. But uh, in this position, Paul Benko found a great Zwischenzug, uh, two moves down the line. If you don't see it, uh, then you're not going to play what he played. Uh, so I would invite you to pause the video here and try to find the absolute best move for white. Try to find the move that simply wins wins the game. Okay, in this position, uh, Paul Benko took on f4, and knight takes f4 is just a devastating threat. Okay, so uh, what what's being threatened is in this position, if e takes f4 is played simply taking the knight, well then you get mated in three moves after queen to d4. Of course knight e4 is, is now you just take the knight. Uh, so for example knight e6, defending mate on g7, but just queen takes knight. Okay, uh, oh excuse me, uh, no, excuse me, not queen to d5, queen to d4. I said queen d4 and put the queen on d5. So in this position... Knight e6 would be one way to stop the mate on g7, and now bishop takes e6, and then queen f6 would be the only move to stop mate, and then queen takes f6, and then it's just over, you get mated uh, on, on g7. So if the knight takes f4, you, you cannot take the knight, e takes f4 leads to mate. So Duncan Suttles played what he'd intended, he played knight e4. Now we come to the hard part. Okay, so in this position, uh, Paul Benko played an extraordinary move. So first of all, he played queen to e3, which I was really impressed with. Uh, if uh, you take my knight, I'm going to take your knight, and that's going to be it. But you may be wondering what happens on knight takes uh, knight takes bishop, which was played in the game. Seemingly, white is losing a piece, and now you have to find that sufficient zug. This is remarkable. I, this is probably, well, it's my second favorite example out of all six that I wanted to show you. So again, pause the video if you want to. Uh, good job if you calculated everything in advance. Here he played the move queen to g3. And after queen g3, the only move is king h8. Okay, because the knight is pinned, you, you don't have knight g5. And after king h8, you now play queen takes c3, and the pawn is pinned. And basically, White is a pawn up for free. Black's center crumbled. Black has huge control. No king. Uh, white has huge control. Black has no king safety, and it's all over. So, I mean, Bishop C4 was played. I think he'd already calculated everything out. He was expecting Knight C5, which is a very tempting move to play. But now Knight takes F4. Knight E4 anyway. Queen to E3 attacking the Knight. If you move the Knight, then. Well, what? Queen g3. Uh, knight takes c3. Queen g3 check. Remarkable putting the king on the same diagonal. King h8. Queen takes c3. And he went on to win in about 10 moves. 10-15 moves. Okay. Uh, the next example is probably the most complicated one. So in this position, uh, rook a to c8 was played by Peter Swidler. This game was played when Peter Swidler was very young. Boris Gal Galfand was all already or should I say, still a very strong player. So in this position, what would you do with white? Um, of course, you could play a normal move, like knight takes bishop, um, rook takes c1, for example, rook takes c1, queen takes knight, and I mean, probably, 
probably white is slightly better after something like knight f7, queen b2, rook e1, but that advantage is going to be very marginal. In fact, it's a question whether this pawn majority is going to be a huge asset for black or not. If it is going to be, then, then white is in trouble. So, uh, I mean, when I was analyzing this game, I was amazed with, with the next move, and after the next move, it's, it's just all over. Uh, so pause the video, take your time uh, and find the best move. For, find the move that basically there is no defense to. Okay, in this position, Boris Gelfand played the remarkable uh, bishop e6. And you might be wondering, well, what the, what the hell is this? Uh, so the knight is attacked, uh, the bishop is attacked. The knight is defended twice for the moment, fine. But this move seems very strange. When you see what it does, uh, it's it's just an extraordinary idea. Okay, so first of all, let's look at two moves that uh, weren't played. The What was played in the game was rook b8, basically giving up. And Svidla resigned uh, one move later. So let's look at rook takes c7, which seems normal. After rook takes c7 uh, and rook takes c7, if you try taking the bishop, then of course queen takes g7 is checkmate, so you cannot take the bishop. So in this position f7 would be hanging and b7 would be hanging. White could continue with rook to d7, white could continue with rook to d8. A lot of a lot of pressure on the black position. Okay, so rook to c7, rook takes c7 simply doesn't work. The other move that doesn't work is f takes e6, because after f takes e6, you play knight takes e6, threatening mate. Okay, so the only way to stop mate is either rook g8 or, or bishop h6. If you play rook g8, I take on c8, and that's a free rook, and you're getting mated, because if you take uh, queen takes g7, if you don't take, I take the rook and then take on g7. Uh, and the other move after f takes e6, knight takes e6, bishop h6, is simply knight takes f8. Again, threatening mate on uh, on h7, threatening the rook, so the only move that makes any sense is rook takes knight, but now rook c7, and good luck defending. You have to give up your queen. Queen takes c7 is the only way to stop mate, but then, I mean, queen against two bishops, easily winning. And yeah, and in the game, after, uh, after bishop e6, rook to b8 was played, and in this position, simply bishop takes f7. And here, Peter Svidler resigned. Now, what can he do? For example, uh, okay, I was looking at the move bishop c6, uh, which seems to be a logical move. But now knight e6, and of course, if you, if you take the bishop, I take the rook and then threaten mate. If you play something like queen e5, uh, preventing me from taking anything, then I continue bishop takes g6, <laughs> again threatening mate. And after queen takes e6, which is the only move you'd have to give up your queen, uh, if you, well, what else can you do? So it was just an extraordinary game and, and an extraordinary Zwischenzug. I mean, this is such a complex position that, I mean, I'm not expecting that I would ever spot this in a game, but I think... Uh, looking at examples like this is going to make it more likely for me to sp to spot something, or, or at least I'm going to try to find something complicated. Because I would say that the alarm bell should ring in your mind once you have this position, because black's pieces are sort of... Well, they're not coordinated well, and it seems that there are a lot of weaknesses around the king. So bishop e6, very beautiful move, very hard move to find. Rook b8, bishop takes f7 and resigns, game over. Okay, uh, the next example is also great. So in this position, uh, Oleg Romanishin is playing white against Ivanchuk in 86, uh, and a queen trade was offered. Now, again, you, you could play, you could be better, slightly better, after queen d4, uh, cd4, knight e4, probably knight d5, bishop e5, fine. White has a slight advantage, the bishops are great, black center seems very weak. D4 seems weak, E6 seems weak, um, the C file is open for, for white's uh, pieces and fine. You could also, after Queen D4, play something like Queen B3 and play for an advantage. 
where you're of course threatening mate so something like queen b4 would have to be played but now bishop e5 and again a lot of pressure on, on the black position white is again slightly better if queen takes queen a takes queen the b uh, the a7 pawn is hanging your king cannot defend the bishops are monsters and fine i'm sure Romanishin could win this as well but when you see a good move look for a zwischenzug look for a better one uh, so in this position he played a move which is just I mean, such a great move that after that move, you, you have to give up. I mean, that, there's nothing. If you want to pause the video. Okay, so he played the move knight to b5, hanging his queen. Uh, if you take the queen, that's easy to calculate. Uh, queen takes... Uh, excuse me. If queen takes c4, then knight takes a7, and that's mate, so you cannot take the queen. Uh, after knight to b5 uh, in the game, uh, bishop takes b5 was played, which stops checkmate. But now simply bishop takes b7, and again, that's another decision, so you don't just take the bishop. If queen takes b5, then knight d5, probably something like rook takes e6 and white is still winning, but you want to be precise. After bishop takes b5, you don't recapture, you play bishop b7 check. And of course... I mean, what can you do? If you don't take the bishop, then I'm going to take here and it's going to be mate. If you play king d7. And if you take the bishop, then queen takes b5. Either king a8 or king c8, doesn't matter. Queen c6 is checkmate. So again, I mean, whenever a simple solution is offered and you have time on the clock, look for a better move. Look for a better move. Your opponent is definitely expecting you to either trade the queens or move your queen away. Nobody is expecting such a powerful move as knight b5. And this last example is my favorite one. Uh, so in this position, after queen d2, uh, black takes uh, the rook. Okay. So, uh, the material situation is three minor pieces against three minor pieces and the rook uh, for, uh, for black. Two rooks for black, one rook for white. Okay, and what uh, White was hoping for was uh, simply Queen takes d5, which he did play, and now e takes d5, Bishop takes, excuse me, Bishop takes f5, and okay, two bishops and a knight and a rook. So White is an exchange down, but he has seven pawns. Black has five pawns. Probably black is slightly better, but this rook is absurd on h8. So, you know, a balanced position, anything could happen. Probably something like knight e7, uh, I don't know, bishop to b1. Probably rook h6, getting the rook out and, and threatening stuff. So, black probably has an advantage, but white could hold. Instead of that, uh, after queen takes rook and queen takes queen, uh, black played the move. Uh, Dronavali Harika played a move after which Nigel Short resigned. If you want to pause the video and and find the winning Zwischenzug. Okay, so uh, Black played a move bishop to c2 and that that's just my favorite out of the six. Uh, so this move A threatens checkmate, so you have to react. So moving the queen, I mean, you could move it to b5, then I take it and still threaten mate. Uh, the more important thing is it defends the knight and now after you save yourself from checkmate with for example bishop e3 or bishop d2 then i simply take your queen and i don't think you're taking my knight so a great way to to win a piece and i mean it shows that even the strongest grandmasters take some moves for granted and i think i think that this is very illustrative for 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 weaker players or players of my level uh, that that I mean we definitely wouldn't see this immediately but I think looking at patterns like this is going to make it more likely for us to spot them I think you have to be uh, conscious of the fact that you are missing something so it's, it's that feeling when you're solving a puzzle and you cannot see the solution but you know that there's something there so you keep looking in a real game you don't know it's a puzzle so you stop and you play pawn takes queen if this was a puzzle position i'm sure 99 percent of you would find bishop c2 after a while if this was a real game i'm sure 90 percent of us and me included would just take the queen 
So be conscious of the fact that you are missing good moves. Try to look for them. Of course, you cannot do that at, 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 at every turn because the game is limited to 90 minutes. But in positions which seem critical, when there are trades of major pieces or where there are major changes in the position, take your time, try to look for a better move. I think that's time well invested. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you got something from this video. Uh, look for Zwischenzug examples yourself. I would advise you that whenever you analyze your games and you see that you have missed a Zwischenzug, take note of that, put it in a separate Leech study or however you store your positions and then go over it, go over it, go over it, learn the patterns. This is a great pattern. Once you take the queen, your piece is going to be hanging, but you can defend the, the piece and threaten mate and th then it's over. Okay, thank you very much and uh, stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.